All right, for the motor examination, I want to illustrate uh, just a couple parts of this. Uh, first of all, for strength testing, um, it's very important that we give good effort, that you actually try to break the muscle without obviously causing pain to the patient. And with one exception, we really want to check each muscle side to side. The one exception is the deltoids. So I have you hold your elbows up like this. And this one I will check together because we don't want to pull the patient off the bed by just checking one side. Okay, so I'll ask the patient to push up against our hands, push down hard, and you really want to give good effort. Again, be sensitive. If someone has rotator cuff or something like that, you don't want to be, you know, just pulling down. But I'm really trying to break the muscle and I'm thinking about what I'm doing. I'm comparing the strength in one arm compared to the other. Okay, next we'll check biceps. So pull toward you, good, pull toward you, excellent, and then triceps, push me away, excellent, and I'm going to get a little leverage on him, he's strong here, let me push your, just relax a little bit, now push me away, okay, push me away, excellent, and then hold your fingers out like this, uh, finger extensors are important to assess, this is a very sensitive muscle, like when someone's had a stroke. And so I'll have you push up against my hand. It's a muscle you can overcome, so it's really nice to compare strength side to side. And I'll often go back several times to really determine, do I think they're symmetrical or not? What you shouldn't do on the motor exam is to check, other than deltoids, muscles at the same time. So hold your arms like this. So pull toward you. This is not as, it's really hard to tell simultaneously the strength in this arm versus this arm. So preferred is to check one and then compare to the other side. <clears throat> in the lower extremities, we'll check, check hip flexion, push your knee up. That's good. Push up over here. That's good. Push your knees apart. Okay. Push apart over here, and we'll check one at a time. Good, and now push your knees together. We'll try to push out over here and over here. Good, straighten this leg out. Quadriceps here, and then over here. Good, pull your heel back against my hand, it's the hamstrings, good. And then over here, excellent. And then bend your toes up towards the ceiling, push up. The tibialis anterior. Good, and now push your foot down, gastrocnemius. Excellent. So that really doesn't take long to do, going side to side. And obviously if there's weakness, you're gonna do more detailed testing. Um, the other two things that should really always be done in a motor exam of a new patient are finger tapping and pronator drift. So let's have you with the right hand, tap your thumb and index finger. Same thing with the other hand. Good. Finger tapping is a great screening test because if someone's weak, they're gonna tap slower in one hand. If they have ataxia, they'll have a hard time tapping right on the end of their thumb. If they have Parkinson's, they have really small finger tapping. Um, and again, we don't wanna do this where you tap both at the same time because um, if someone's had a stroke, for example, they may tap like this in one hand, but if you ask them to tap both hands together, they may do this, okay, and you'll miss out if you don't do one at a time that actually one hand is tapping a lot faster and better than the other. And then the other really good sensitive screening test is pronator drift. Give the patient hold their hands about like that. You know, close your eyes. Excellent. So that seems like a long time, but you do need to wait at least seven or eight seconds. And of course, what you're looking for, hold your hands up like this again, is pronation. So if one hand were to do this, that would be a positive pronator drift. And that goes along with an upper motor neural lesion, typically in the opposite hemisphere. 